Shabbat Shalom. How you doing? You holding up okay? In these overcast times? I've been better. Now the diminishing light of our December days seem to mirror the deepening shadows spreading over the earth. It just seems to me that the world seems darker this year. You'll recall that God's first act of creation was the creation of light. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Talmud describes this light. Rabbi Elazar taught, the light which the Holy One created on the first day allowed one to see from one end of the world to the other. But as soon as God saw the generation of the flood and saw their actions were corrupt, God hid the light from human beings. It's a profound teaching. The light of the first day was not like the light of our day. That light was limitless. There was no darkness. Nothing restricted that light. But human action, human corruption, restricts our vision, blotting out the warmth and diminishing the radiance of existence. The upshot of the teaching is that it is the human task to recapture more of that first light of paradise, the light of creation, when sin was absent and all was good. Vayar Elohim et Aor Kitov, and God saw that the light was good. Our task is to atone for sin, improve our actions, love better, and love more. I am aware of the anxiety you are feeling. All of the clergy are. We have spoken with dozens of you in the past months. We've heard the confusion in the voices of our children and young adults. We know that many parents are worried about the atmosphere in schools and even on the streets of New York. We have consulted with many of you about the increased tensions in your workplace and amongst your office colleagues. We've heard from our college students and their parents and alumni of universities expressing their fears frustrations and protestations. Tuesday was a sad day for America, exposing the moral rot that has settled in our most cherished and precious institutions of higher learning. The phrase, context-dependent decision, will for years mark the moral degradation of what were once the greatest centers of higher learning in the history of human civilization. And of course, we're deeply concerned about Israel, exacerbated by the explosion of hate directed not only against the Jewish state, but also perhaps primarily against the Jewish people. You should know that we too, your rabbis, your clergy, your teachers and administrators, all of us are feeling what you're feeling. I've experienced so many deep and powerful passions since October 7th that I'm frequently taken off guard by some surge of emotion that gushes out of me seemingly from nowhere. A mixture of sadness, pain, mourning, anxiety, disappointment, and disenchantment activated by the most innocuous triggers. But along with these emotions, I have also experienced in these past months the deepest gratitude to God, especially during this period, for giving me life, for sustaining me, and for allowing me to reach this Hanukkah season. 
I'm grateful to be a Jew, especially now, a member of this remarkable, miraculous, resilient, proud, and strong people. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech ha'olam asher bachar banu mikol ha'amim v'natan lano et torato. Praised are you, O God, ruler of the universe, who singled us out from amongst all of the nations to be messengers of Torah. It's the second night of Hanukkah today. Clear your troubled head, lift your heavy heart, soothe your battered soul. You have permission to rejoice. Laugh this week. Eat foods you might normally avoid. <laughs> Calorie-laden latkes and jelly-filled donuts dripping with the unhealthiest of oil. Embrace your loved ones. Fill your homes with love. It is not the weight you carry, but how you carry it, wrote Mary Oliver. Have you heard the laughter that comes now and again out of my startled mouth? How I linger to admire, admire, admire the things of this world that are kind. And maybe also troubled. Roses in the wind, the sea geese on the steep waves. A love to which there is no reply. When you enter our doors, there's nothing you need to prove. You do not have to justify your existence or explain your loyalties to Judaism or to Israel. This is safe space for you. You're with your people here. Take comfort. Admire, admire, admire the things of this world that are kind. Rejoice in the miracle of Jewish survival symbolized by the light of the menorah. Publicize the miracle. This sanctuary represents our insistence upon Jewish dignity. This space is devoted to the enduring and the indomitable will of our people to survive and prosper and to make a difference in the world. Of course we care about what others think. Of course we're concerned with universal repair. The world, by the way, learned that from us. It was our Torah that taught humanity that slavery and oppression are wrong and that we should pursue justice and peace, compassion and well-being for all of God's creatures. But with the greatest respect to our critics and with defiance towards our enemies, remember we Jews have a long and majestic tradition. We do not need to be lectured about context-driven hatreds of Jews. We know all about them. We've seen everything. And we survived everything. Hanukkah is the festival of Jewish survival, the commemoration of Jewish commitment. By the time of the Maccabees, some 2,200 years ago, it was almost over for the Jews. There were hardly any Jews left in the world. Judaism was on the verge of disappearing. In some inexplicable way, the fundamentally flawed Hasmoneans, a rather obscure family from the countryside of Judea, ended up, for a brief moment in time, being the vehicle through which Judaism survived. Were it not for them, Judaism could have easily ended around the second or first century BCE, the period that many ancient civilizations succumbed to Hellenism and disappeared off the face of the earth. Jewish survival, Jewish commitment, this is the message of Hanukkah bringing light to a dark world, sustaining hope for humanity. This is the message of Hanukkah. You are part of a tradition that 
never yields to despair. No matter how dark the day that affirms that light will shine on humanity, dark days always become brighter. It is the way of the world. Night yields to day, darkness to the swift sunrise of dawn. Our tradition teaches that even during the darkest days, God is not absent, simply hidden. There's no endless night in Judaism, no endless suffering. Sooner or later, the morning star will appear, heralding brighter times. The Zohar, Judaism's primary work of mysticism, expanded upon Rabbi Elazar's teaching. God withheld the light of creation from the corrupt world. But what happened to that light? Where did it go? Did it disappear entirely? Rabbi Judah taught it did not disappear. It was simply hidden and no longer seen. Had it been hidden away altogether, the world would not have been able to exist even for one moment. But it was only hidden like a seed that generates other seeds and fruits. And the world is sustained by it. There is not a day, taught Rabbi Judah, that something does not emanate from that life and from that light to sustain all things. This is our task. When we light the Hanukkah candles, may it be that each flicker of light, every good deed we do, nourish those hidden seeds of goodness, sustaining our world and all things. In the words of Psalm 97 that we chanted a few minutes ago and we sing every Shabbat, Or zarua la tzaddik, ulishrei lev simcha. Light is sown for the righteous, and the upright shall be radiant.